Welcome to the Happiness Alliance training module, Why Measurements Matter. Let's start with a reflection, an intuitive exercise. How do you know if you had a good day or a bad day? Think about how your day went yesterday. Did you meet with friends and go to a show? Did you get a ticket? Either way, you have a measurement there. The times that you met with friends, those are good days. The times that you got tickets, those are bad days. How do you know if you're healthy or unhealthy? Maybe it's your temperature or if you're coughing. These are ways that we measure our health. How do you decide if you are successful in life? You probably reflexively think about what kind of job you're going to have or what kind of position you have in your job or how much money you make. We'll talk about that and why you think that shortly. How does a nation decide if it's successful? Usually, it's by how strong the economy is. And we're going to talk about why that is shortly. Gross domestic product is the sum of all goods and services produced in a year or any other time period measured in your currency. Gross domestic product is used by almost every nation to measure success. The reason for this is that a healthy economy is supposed to mean that people are going to be happy and that the country is going to be strong. It's true that the more money you make, the happier you will be up to a certain point. But after that point, it's no longer true. And the fact is that money cannot buy endless happiness. Other things bring the kind of happiness that really makes you feel happier and happier as you have them. The most important thing that makes you happy is other people. Now, this is our first exercise for this module. Read this aloud to yourself, or you can each take a turn if you're in a classroom and read one sentence aloud to each other, going around in a circle. The next exercise is you'll take a piece of paper, fold it into four, and in each quadrant, write down what contributes to GDP and makes you happy. So for example, some of the things that make you happy and contribute to GDP would be going to a show with your friends. Another thing might be going out to a restaurant. And then on the opposite side, write what contributes to GDP but does not make you happy. So this might be if somebody broke into your house, now you have to buy new things and you have to fix your door. That contributes to GDP, but probably doesn't make you happy. What does not contribute to GDP and what does not make you happy? So an example of this would be pollution, trash all over the streets. And then in the last quadrant, write what does not contribute to GDP, but makes you happy. So this might be making food for yourself instead of going to the restaurant or just hanging out with your family and friends and just talking or taking a walk. Do measurements matter? Now, intuitively and logically, we use measurements. We use measurements to guide our decisions, and we use measurements to help us figure out if we are meeting our goals. But there's a concept out there that if we were living in harmony with nature, if we were living in balance, if we were living sustainably, we wouldn't need metrics. That's simply not true what probably would happen is we wouldn't rely so much on what we call objective metrics, such as gross domestic product, and we would rely more on subjective metrics, the metrics that measure how we feel, what our impressions of things are, how satisfied we are. This is very important to understand about metrics, and that is the role that metrics have in systems. Now, metrics and values operate in a feedback loop. You measure what you value, and you value what you measure. You get what you measure, and you measure what you want. At a societal level, the dominant metrics of a system impact the values of the people in that system. So when the government is measuring GDP, what happens is that it impacts the values of the people in that system. And we'll talk about that in a minute. At any level, how success is measured impacts the decisions people make and how people behave. 
in the classroom, success is measured by the grades that you get, which means that you're going to really put your efforts into doing what you have to do to get good grades. In another classroom, success might be measured by how well you work on a team. In that case, you'd be putting a lot of effort in working really well with your colleagues. Now, this is how GDP is influencing us in our lives today. Governments use GDP to measure the success of meeting their goals. Now, most governments, their goals is the well being of their people. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is supposed to be the purpose of the government in the United States. Liberty, legality, and fraternity in France. Every nation has its goals. Every nation has its priorities. And many nations use GDP to try to reach those goals. We talked about earlier how GDP does make people happier up to a certain point. But there's a problem when we use GDP as the main goal and the main metric for meeting the well-being of our people. And it's this, is that when governments use GDP, they shift the goals from life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or whatever those goals are, to bring about the well-being of the people. They shift those goals to economic outputs and economic growth, which causes a shift in values in the people living in that country. And those values go towards being as rich as you can, having as much hierarchy and prestige, the biggest position, the most power that you can, and being as handsome or beautiful or as fit as you possibly can. That's what people value. That's what people see as successful when GDP is the main measure used by a government. If a government were to switch over to happiness and well-being metrics, goals of the government would shift to providing more of a social safety net, which would cause a shift in the values among people towards caring about other people, caring about the environment, and prioritizing how well they're doing on the inside, prioritizing the kind of life that they're living, prioritizing so that they're living a life that they were meant to live instead of living the life that brings about the most money or the best looks. We're starting to see some of this in some countries, and this is a big piece of the happiness movement. And what we're saying here in the happiness movement is what really matters in life. So here's some discussion questions. You can do these yourself, or you can do this in a classroom setting. And then there's another set of discussion questions. I hope that you enjoyed this segment, and we'll meet you in the next one. Thank you.